So we have learned the definition of the derivative, and we've used it in one example to compare the slope of the secant line and the tangent line. Let's see how it can be applied in other examples. So my example here is the function of g of x equals 1 over x. And the first thing that we want to do with it is just purely find the derivative. Or some other vocabulary that you might be aware of is it might say differentiate the function g of x. It means the same thing, take the derivative of it. So again, I like to do my derivative in three parts to help you separate out what goes where next. The first part is this f of x plus h, where we purely just plug in x plus h into our x in our function. So g of x plus h is 1 over x plus h. If you could simplify, we would expect you to do so. You cannot do anything at this point. So that moves on to the second part of our derivative, and that is this whole fraction here called the difference quotient. So we want to simplify f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. But instead of saying f of x plus h and f of x, we would use g's here because we are talking about our g function instead of an f function. So our g of x plus h is 1 over x plus h minus our g of x is the original function, 1 over x, and that is all over h. Now, we might not think there's anything to do at this point, and so you might want to move on to the third part of this function, the limit of h goes to 0. But if we do that, we would get zeros in the denominators, which really throws things off. So we cannot do that yet. You must simplify this as far as you possibly can. Our ultimate goal is to get rid of this h here. Once you've done that, then you know that you can move on to the third step of this function. So we actually want to simplify this, and the way that we're going to do that is just simplify our numerator. So we have fractions here. The way that we add or subtract fractions is we need a least common denominator. This x plus h is one unit, and my x is one unit. So I have to multiply by my opposite pieces to get my LCD. So I multiply my first fraction by the x, and I multiply my second fraction by the x plus h. So this gives me x over x times x plus h minus x plus h over x times x plus h. And that's still all over h. So I have an LCD now in these denominators, so I want to now subtract my numerator. This negative goes to my whole second fraction, so I find it best to distribute it through so I don't misinterpret any negatives in those steps. So now, look, my x's cancel out, and so that leaves me with negative h over x times x plus h all over h. So now I have a fraction divided by a fraction, or at least you can make it that way. So we divide fractions by flipping and multiplying. So I have negative h over x times x plus h times the reciprocal of this denominator here, 1 over h. And so my h over h cancels. So at this point, I'm left with a negative 1 in the numerator and an x times an x plus h in the denominator. So I can actually move on to the third part of my derivative, which is the limit as h goes to 0, which really means I just substitute 0 in for all of my h's. So that gives me negative 1 over x times x plus 0, or negative 1 over x squared. And so we have come up with the derivative. Okay. Let's put this in the official notation. Our derivative is f prime of x. But 
since this function is g, the derivative notation that we're going to do here is g prime of x. And we just came up with our answer was negative 1 over x squared. So we have found the derivative of this problem. Okay. We know there are multiple ways to apply it, so let's go ahead and see that in an example. So we have the exact same equation here, g of x equals 1 over x, and so we want to do these things with it. We want to find the slope at x equals 2. We want to find the exact equation of the tangent line at the same place. And then we're going to double check all of our work here by using the graphing calculator. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to find the slope. Well, the derivative equation gives us the slope. So we just found that the derivative, or g prime of x, was negative 1 over x squared. That's what we did in the last step. So now we actually get to use it. So the slope here is, again, given by the derivative notation. So to find the slope, we just figure out what g prime of 2 is. And so that's negative 1 over 2 squared. So negative 1 over 4. So our slope when x equals 2 is this negative 1 fourth. And so that is the answer for part A. For part B is we want to come up with the equation of the tangent line. Well, basically we want to come up with the equation of a line, meaning we can use one of our line formulas. y equals mx plus b or the y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. Either one that you want to do is perfectly fine. It's your personal preference. But in both of them, we need the slope, which of course we have. We just computed that in part A. And we need either a point or specifically a y-intercept. Well, we don't have a y-intercept, and you might not think that we have a point either. We don't have an obvious point that was given to us, but we can actually compute our own point. We know that our x value is 2, so we can substitute that into our original equation, and that will give us our corresponding y value. So my y value is given by g of 2. And so in this example, that's 1 half. So that gives me the point to 1 half. And, of course, our slope is negative one-fourth. You can use either equation. I prefer the second one, but that's my preference. If you prefer the other one, then go ahead and do the other one. So I have y minus my y value of one-half equals my slope of negative one-fourth times x minus my x value of two. And all I have to do is simplify this here. So I have y minus one-half equals distribute my negative one-fourth through negative one-fourth x plus negative one-fourth times two. My twos cancel out, and my negatives cancel out, so that gives me one-half. If I move this one-half to the other side, that gives me my answer of y equals negative one-fourth x plus one-half and one-half totals up to give me one. So there's my equation of my tangent line. Now, because of time, I'm going to finish this video here. And in the next video, I'm going to do the double checking with the graphing calculator.